Hi everybody, welcome to my video on how to draw clothing, wrinkles, and folds. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to apply convincing and realistic looking wrinkles and folds to your loose-fitting clothing drawings. So I'm drawing an arm here to represent, well, the arm that we're going to put the clothing on. And we're going to just start with a shirt. Now, it's very important that you start with a line that is a little outside of the size of the arm that you're drawing. Because with, with uh, folds, they're just basically air pockets. So you start with an outside line and then an inside line to make, sure, to make it look as if there's air between the two lines. Right? And that, that helps the effect. And uh, of course, with say like something like a shirt, as I'm doing here, all, all the wrinkles and the folds basically flow in one direction. Now to make it look very convincing, you have to also give the indication that part of the shirt is stuck to the skin and part of the shirt is again with the air pockets. So uh, to do that is to also just create, again, when you create the outside line, create the inside line to make it give the illusion of part of the shirt being stuck to the skin. Now the wrinkles on the shirts um, usually start somewhere and usually they start where the arm bends or transitions to a different part of the shirt. So that area will have um, especially more wrinkles like on the part of the deltoid where it transitions onto the chest and also between the bicep and the forearm when you're bending the arm there are more lines there in order to indicate that when the shirt's folded it creates more creases. And those creases can trickle down and turn into different folds on the shirt giving it a very convincing fold. And again, also something that gives it more convincing fold is when it flows in the same direction. And creating folds is like thinking about the flow of water. Everything flows and looks more um, realistic when they're going in the same direction. And that also has a lot to do with how the body is reacting. Most of the time when you're drawing folds and wrinkles, it's to give the illusion of motion. And if you are drawing motion and you are drawing a person in motion and that person in motion has uh, clothing on, then the most important thing is to draw the, the wrinkles in the correct flow so that the person convincingly looks like they're doing or performing the motion that you want them to. But because if they're not, if the wrinkles don't look that way, then it is not going to be convincing and it's going to look really weird on the drawing. So say like the woman I'm drawing here, she's basically just uh, stepping with her left leg across her right leg. And um, of course, her right arm going across her body. So for me to indicate that, even exaggerated a little bit, that she is making quite a, a drastic move right there, I indicate that with her clothing. And running her wrinkles, uh, running the wrinkles of the clothing across her body gives um, not only the illusion that she is making um, a drastic move, but that her clothes, her clothing is also making that move with her. And the two things combined makes the drawing itself absolutely dynamic. So remember that when you are um, drawing people in motion and they do have clothing on, make sure that you are using the flow of the motion to indicate where the wrinkles and the folds are going to be. Very important. Now say like someone who is wearing something more loose fitting like a hoodie, it's very important also to make baggy clothing look as realistic as say something a little bit more firm fitting. So if someone who's you know more relaxed, say a hoodie and they're wearing because hoodies are tend to wrinkle a lot. So it gives you an opportunity to just put a lot more wrinkles. But again, if you really are not putting the wrinkles in the right spot, then it's gonna look just like 
like a really terrible joint. So hoodies kind of drape down a little bit, especially if someone has their hands in their pockets. So you have to indicate that specifically with the wrinkle technique that I just mentioned before, along with the for where the forearm meets the bicep, you put a little bit, little bit more folds. Where the shoulder turns into the chest, there are more folds right there because there are more opportunity for wrinkling because of how tight that area is. And with the pants, that's a great another great opportunity to uh, make an example of how the creasy areas are get more fold because you can transition the wrinkles from the groin to the pants legs very easily by showing a couple a um, couple more folds than just folds alongside the pants. And here we have an example of where the wrinkles can go directly across the body from one side. There can be more wrinkles because of how the figure is standing. Now this figure is kind of uh, has basically like a sexy walk, but her hips is to one side more than the other. So the side that her hips is bending towards mostly is the side that's gonna get more of the folds because because she's bending or because her hips is swaying to one side her the other part the top part of her body is also swaying to that side and so it creates more folds and when you create more folds it's okay to to just have the folds go from one side to and then just kind of disappear into the other side without touching the other side because Touching the other side will mean that she's also bending in that direction, which she's not. And that will not look like realistic folds. Now here's an example of how wrinkles and folds uh, really affects motion. Now we're, we're going to use an example of a female running. And this female is wearing some clothes that are semi-tight. Right, semi firm fitting, but also even though they're firm fitting, they are loose enough that they create folds in the motion that she's making. So let's say uh, she, uh, I don't know, she's doing a sprint, and in her sprint she's doing like full extension with everything, even even her arms, right? And we'll just uh, fine tune her body here to make it look a little bit more feminine, and. You know, she's running with the fist. I'm not really focusing too much on the the exact drawing of the body, but more so on what's coming now, which is showing you how the flow of the clothing that she's wearing is assisting this drawing in looking really dynamic. And again, um, because she is basically kind of twisting the folds on the left side, they're more plentiful because she's kind of squinching back. But now you see how the folds on the right side of her of her clothing is also there and also have a lot of like air pockets. That's because she's twisting. And that gives the illusion that that you know that she is basically turning from one side to the other. Action poses are actually the best way to practice folds because if you do if you do practice your folds and then action pose and they don't look dynamic, then you know you're doing them wrong. Again, around the knee here, because the knee is so bended, um, in the back of the knee, we're gonna just put a few more folds and those folds can actually drape off into uh, a couple more folds that run along line of the thighs, like kind of like what I did there. And, on, and again, flowing in the same direction on the other leg, I made the folds um, kind of seem like they're water flowing in one direction and it gave it gave the indication that even though her clothes are firm fitting she is in motion because because her clothes is in motion now with this next example i'm going to show you how to do folds when a a female figure is wearing very loose but drapery clothing now for this um, figure she's going to be wearing uh, kind of like a blouse that turns into a dress or some sort and uh, but it drapes she has drapery type of 
sleeves and also a skirt. So a good way to do folds for this, um, like I said, is to create the ear pockets before. But I see on her arm where I do the squiggly lines and I'm doing the squiggly lines for her skirt. That's a great effect. You do the squiggly lines and then you use lines from that, from those points and draw them upwards towards the body or towards the sleeve so that they create the illusion that the dress is draping and waving in the air and creating folds. That's a great way to create um, the illusion of like a swinging drapery, either a cape or a dress. And this example here actually is a way for you to kind of see how folds relate to surrounding light or a main light source. Now, of course, when you do have folds and you do have a certain light source, the folds are going to be different because of the light source. If you're if it's dark in one area and and your light source is penetrating from another area, then your folds are going to look more intense and more uh, shadowed. So, one way to do that is to maintain the fold that the fold techniques that I I mentioned before, but indicate where your light source is coming from. And once you indicate where your light source is coming from, you're able to make that part of the fold lighter. So if you have, if you create the, the pocket, the air pocket effect, where you have two lines um, looking like a fold because it creates an air pocket, then the bottom part of that air pocket is much heavier in line weight because that's where the shadow is. And the, and the top part of that ear pocket is lighter because that's where the light is coming from. And a great way to show you that, I'll show you that right here. Like right now, because the, the light source is coming from your, your right, then all the folds on the left side are going to have a darker shadow than the folds on the right side. As you can see here, it's like I'm making all the lines that I made. I'm just now making a shadow under those lines so that it creates the illusion that where, wherever her light source is coming from, it's creating the shadows that are making these folds and these wrinkles look even more intense. And now um, let me just kind of embellish more on the example I showed you before with the draping. Uh, let's say we're doing something like a cape, but the same effect applies where you do kind of like the zigzags at the bottom. You draw the lines up towards the top of the uh, clothing or the cloth or whatever particle of clothing it is. We're just going to sneak Superman's logo over here. <laughs> and it gives it a great wrinkle effect. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my take and my mindset and my approach to drawing clothing with wrinkles and folds. I hope you were able to pick up a lot from this tutorial because I had a lot of fun doing it. And I hope to see you guys here for my next tutorial and my next video. This is Draw Ninja Casey saying, I'll see you next time.